Thanks for your votes and comments on my post on the 5th of July, calculations showing thrust acceleration. I've made this video of an aerodynamic model to show what can be done with the thrusters after getting some really useful comments from my earlier post. There seems to be some confusion about what might be possible. Feel free to comment on this video directly, but you can also comment on the Tesla Motor Club forums. It's useful to remember Elon's Twitter teasers for the Roads of SpaceX options. They're on the screen here. I'll compare the model with his tweets at the end of the video. There are three things that are creating the Tesla's grip on the road. The mass, carefully sculpted aerodynamic surfaces that push the car down onto the road, and these mysterious SpaceX thrusters. Obviously, more mass makes it harder to accelerate the car, but these factors increase the grip of the car on the road, and therefore the force that can be used to accelerate the car. This is my road, and this is my shiny red sports car, sponsored by Tropicana. I've cut one of the walls out on the inside and replaced it with this panel. So air will come out of vents on the side, the back, and the front. So a hairdryer is about one pound per square inch, and the SpaceX thrusters are about 5,000 pounds per square inch. So when you scale it up, should be able to lift a lot more than a piece of paper. So my previous draft had the panel all the way up to the edge, but I think when Elon builds the Tesla, it will be about 20 centimeters in from the inside of the car. So just to prove that it still works, So the same process that sticks my road to my car also sticks my road to my kitchen bench. So I've just put some pencils underneath to stop a vacuum being created. We can see the same effect here. Watch how five atmospheres of steam affects a candle. <laughs> The examples I've given so far are more to demonstrate that compressed air can cause suction, but the idea on the screen is more like what I think Tesla will finally come up with. After all, I think SpaceX nozzle designers can do a lot better than my can of red spray paint and a Tropicana carton. The picture on the screen is a cross-sectional diagram of a Dyson bladeless fan. There's a compressed air chamber and the air is forced out through a narrow strip as shown by the red arrow. If we were to position something like this under the car, the air would be forced towards the outside of the car, creating suction and therefore more grip. Elon is recommending that the thrusters aren't used in built-up areas. This is because they'll be really loud. The reason I've created this sound effect is to illustrate the three parts of the 0-60 acceleration time. The bang as the thrusters start, a declining whoosh as the COPV tank empties, and then a rising whine as the ungeared electric motors spin up. I've assumed that the COPV tank is largely exhausted after about 0.5 seconds, so obviously you won't have reached 60 miles per hour. And in this model, the driver coasts and takes their foot off the pedal when they reach 60 miles per hour. You can see this from the graph. There's a really high acceleration time at the beginning that gradually diminishes up until about 0.5 seconds. And then from 0.5 seconds onwards, it follows the model of acceleration for the original Tesla Roadster, which we'll go over in a few seconds. At the end of this video, there's a more detailed analysis of the model. But for the moment, let's just make simple comparisons of the three cars. 
the blue line is for an ordinary car that doesn't have sophisticated aerodynamics. With a big engine and constant power control to stop the wheels skidding, this car gets to 60 miles per hour or 27 meters per second in about 2.75 seconds. The coefficient of friction is therefore 1, because approximately 1 is the coefficient for rubber on concrete, and so thrust forwards is approximately equal to force downwards, the weight of the car. Take a look at this summary of 0 to 60 times for about 650 cars. You can see there's a definite tide mark at about 3 seconds where all of the ordinary cars are. However, I haven't been able to verify the amazing performance of the Nissan. It looks wrong. The orange line is for the original Roadster. It does better because it manages the aerodynamics better than the ordinary cars. Take a look at the Electrek link in the show notes. They have a great picture of the composite aerodynamic structure at the rear of the Roadster. The aerodynamic downforce increases with speed for both Roadsters. More downforce means that the engine can drive the wheels harder before they slip. When ordinary tyres slip, the horizontal forces often drop by about 25%. This is how the original Roadster gets to 60 miles per hour in 1.9 seconds, much less than the 3 second tide mark in the previous slide. The Roadster with the SpaceX option gets an early advantage for the compressed air release and extra suction. In this model, the extra suction due to the SpaceX thrusters is about 2% of one atmosphere, but this is still enough to start the car at 1.8 g acceleration. The thrusters aren't pushing the car to 60 miles per hour. They are pushing air out from under the car to create suction and give it more grip. Using the thrusters for conventional thrust would embed high-velocity gravel in pedestrians. These are graphs of power over time for the ordinary car, the original Roadster and the SpaceX Roadster. But look, he can do all of this using his existing motors, one on each wheel. The dotted red line was calculated using Tesla data for the P85D motors. You can see that the motors can meet the requirements for the power demand. The other way to look at this is that he needs to have four motors. He has already been experimenting with this to prevent jackknifing in his semi-trucks. Gen 3 suggested the car could have pirouette mode by controlling all four wheels independently. I've got a calculation for dragging the attached slides. It's not important for the acceleration because it's just so small in comparison to the one megawatt needed to get to 60 miles an hour. So I can totally imagine this car in a James Bond movie. James Bond is driving at 250 miles an hour. He switches the car onto Mad Max autopilot, blasts the sunroof off and starts firing at the enemies trailing behind him. On a more serious note, isn't it amazing that they've managed to fit all of this extra kit into a car with a 620 mile range? They've got the four motors, the compressor, the hot air cooling radiator, possibly the cold air expansion radiator, the COPV air store, and they've only taken out two of the seats to fit all of this in. So it's possibly the batteries that are the big technological revolution here. Finally, at the beginning of the video, I said I would compare what we've gone through to Elon's tweets. So he said we're going to have 10 small rocket thrusters, and I think this would be three on either side, two at the front and two at the back, and they'd be arranged, as he said, seamlessly around the car. And this would help with any high acceleration maneuver, braking, cornering, whatever you want, because it's giving you more grip. I'm using a 2% pressure drop. I've no idea what he will use, but I think the 2% is a bit cautious. For the electric pump, everybody's going to need one of those and for allowing the tesla to fly he could have put a vent in the middle of the car to make it bounce slightly this could just be elon being ridiculous but who knows feel free to comment on tesla motor club or the video directly and i'd love to hear what you think